Let's get this party started by drifting right into your recommendations. Bob Doyle thinks that Driver San Francisco is awesome. It starts off as a generic cops and robbers drama, but takes an interesting twist after the first 10 minutes. The gameplay and being able to truly drive through the streets of San Francisco is awesome. I'm jumping from a sports car to a bus to a taxi to an 18 wheeler on the fly is mind blowing. And what's even better is just smashing all those cars. Let's keep it simple, Driver San Francisco is awesome. There is plenty to do, the game is entertaining and the music is pretty cool. The game reminds me a bit of my favorite racing game, Burnout. Overall it's a lot of fun if you like Burnout or really enjoyed the previous driver games. I'd say pick this one up. Our next recommendation comes from Tumo with Lair and it's Dragons. Literally, riding dragons and burning entire armies to the ground. What's not to like? Lair is like a medieval combat flying simulator with dragons. I recently picked this launch title up and was blown away. I haven't finished the game yet, but the first levels were fun enough. We get to fly around on a dragon setting things on fire and blowing stuff up. The controls need some getting used to, but thankfully you can turn off the 6-axis gimmick thingy if that's how you prefer to play the game. I really enjoyed the attention to detail, the soundtrack and the lore, everything seems to be well thought out. So I guess you will see this game featured in one of my future PS3 Hidden Gems videos. Hello there! Hey yo guys, how are you doing? This is my 11th PlayStation 3 Hidden Gems video and there is still more to come. Today we are taking a look at another action packed top 10 list with PlayStation 3 Hidden Gems. In fact, there will be so much over the top action and testosterone that your mom will grow a beard. And you all know what that means. Grab yourself some pizza and a coffee, kick back and make yourself comfortable and let's get the kick out of gaming. Today we are kicking off this list with the bargain bin Call of Duty, Soldier of Fortune Payback. And this is a hard recommendation. I know that a lot of gamers will not enjoy this game. But sometimes I need a simple shooter in my life. A game I can pick up and mow down an entire country and be done with it in two hours. Sometimes I need to let off some steam. I personally liked it for its over the top violence and cheesy story, but I have to admit that this game has problems. Loading times are a bit long and the texture popping is noticeable. It's practically a glorified shooting gallery. What should I say? I have a soft spot for taking down a terrorist infested third world country in the goriest way possible, with one of the most powerful shotguns in gaming. This baby is shredding our enemies, literally. The weapons overall pack a freaking punch. And that's the main reason I recommend this game. It's nothing special, but if you find it in the bargain bin and go in with the right mindset, you will have a bloody good time with Soldier of Fortune Payback. The next game on this list has some issues too, but thanks to the dirty jokes, beers, awesome easter eggs and boobies, Zombier gets a pass. This game is hilarious and the video game equivalent of a B-movie, so it's time to shut your brain off and have a good time. We awaken alone in a Mexican bar, after a night of overindulging, all alone dizzy and disoriented, we realize that we have been bitten and from now on need to juggle luck to stay human. The story is campy like a classic horror movie, but what makes Zombier interesting is the drunkness meter. And what really sold me on it were the easter eggs and cult film references everywhere. It's definitely checking out for this feature alone. Overall, Zombier has a lot of potential, but what holds it back is the gameplay with the less than satisfying shooting mechanics. It all feels a bit undercooked. This is fucking raw! 
in the end, for me it does enough things right with its immaturity, zombies and humor. It comes together to create an amusing, if incomplete, horror comedy first person shooter. If that sounds like your kind of thing, then Zombier can prove to be a lot of goofy fun. The next game on this list is all about the convoluted political storyline, tons of customization and, most importantly, fast paced mech combat action with blowing the crap out of stuff in Front Mission Evolved. This is the first Front Mission game I played and I have to say I had an absolute blast and a genuinely good time. Provided you share my love for sky high building crushing mechs, you will love this game. It's a pretty straightforward corridor mech shooter that surprised me with a few twists and monumental boss fights. Also, the mech customization made every new level really interesting and adds a bit of strategic touch to the game. For the first playthrough I used the recommended loadout, but once I got the hang of things I experimented a lot with different builds. Front Mission Evolved uses the undeniable charm of giant robots and offers an interesting action experience. So if you want to see some mech smash, <laughs> then you better smash that like button like there's no tomorrow and get a copy of Front Mission Evolved. And while we add topics for adults, based on a pretty dope heart or underrated hidden gem of a comic book movie, Wanted Weapons of Fate is another game you should look out for. The game continues right where the movie left off and drops us straight into the action. We can curve bullets around corners and blast another terrorist organization with style. Wanted Weapons of Fate is a pretty dope movie tie-in game with an awesome 5 hour campaign and tons of action, blood, violence and bullet camps with every freaking kill. It's like the adrenaline fused gameplay of Max Payne with a dynamic cover system from games like Gears of War. And you're probably wondering, why is there a big fat freaking black bar on my screen? That's because this is the German version, the family friendly German version of this game which you should stay away as far as possible. If you wondered how family friendly games in Europe can be, in Wanted Weapons of Fate cutscenes were cut, no bullet cam, no headshots, the freaking headshots in the German version count as body shots so you have to double tap, which makes this game harder for no reason. Collecting games in Europe is sometimes extra challenging especially if you're into action games. And there is another thing, if you buy a whole game collection there is always that freaking mandatory FIFA copy included. What I'm trying to say is, get the international version of Wanted Weapons of Fate. This game is definitely an amazing hidden gem with fun gameplay. The over the top action makes this an incredible extension of the movie that won't let you catch a breather for the 3 to 4 hours of playtime and I'm absolutely there for it. With a pizza, a coffee and some time to kill on a lazy Sunday. Watch the movie first, it's pretty badass too and then dive right into the action. This is one of those badass underrated movie tie-in games you should definitely play. Underrated like the next game on this list as well. Never that. Lucas, one of my viewers, sent me a lengthy email and talked me into giving this game another try. So said and done and let me just say this, I'm a sucker for destructible environments and if you add swordplay Metal Gear Rising style to the mix, I'm already sold. I didn't finish the game when I first got it. So I started a new game and would you look at that, the XP and level ups from my previous unfinished run gave me a head start. Nice. Yes the game has a bit of a learning curve early on, especially since you get dismembered a lot, but the game's difficulty depends on how you approach it. As Lucas pointed out in his mail, you have ways to upgrade your character right and this will help you overcome most scenarios with ease. And once you get the hang of things, 
upgrade the slow-mo skill, Never Dead really takes off. It's a fun and very unique game, and like most PS3 games, it's not that expensive if you buy a used copy. Never Dead is one of those strange but fascinating games. I have to say, originality is hard to find nowadays, but Never Dead has plenty of it. It's a cool and solid hack and slash game. The crazy setting and immortal hero really clicked the second time around for me. A game that clicked at my first playthrough was The Bureau, XCOM Declassified. This is an interesting hybrid between a traditional first person shooter and a strategic game. It comes with a surprisingly solid and intriguing story, which makes this an interesting ride. Aliens taking over the world and our secret anti-alien task force is tasked to kick those balloon-headed crypto wannabes back into the universe. The retro future setting is quite unique and the gameplay is very tense and hard. The AI of the enemies is pretty advanced and they always find ways to outsmart you by surrounding and flanking you from all sides. The Bureau is a smart action game that adds an extra layer to the combat to give you that tactical aspect and perspective. If you enjoyed games like Brothers in Arms, which I have to cover in a future video, this should be right up your sleeve. That's why they're thanking us, Frankie. This isn't safe, Frankie. Oh, lighten up, Corian. It's just a... You're gonna be fine! Look at me! You're going to be fine! While a second player can't control our teammate in XCOM, the next game gives us the kick in co-op gaming. Hunted, the Demon's Forge. This game is a flat out blast to play, solo or with a friend. For this video I played solo and the AI does a great job at making you feel like you aren't alone. It also does a fairly good job at healing you. On top of that we have a very well written story with interesting characters and villains and the dynamic between the two main characters is always fun to listen to. The constant banter and quips between the elf and the warrior never get old. It's a great way to give the world more meaning and it also doesn't shove the backstory down your throat. You slowly learn more about these characters and there can judge a book by its cover personalities. On the other hand, we have the gameplay. The tanky warrior is always my favorite and my elfish skimpy dressed arrow shooting AI companion does a great job at supporting and healing. For the later levels I highly recommend you upgrade the lightning magic skill. It helped a ton and you will breeze through the difficult spots with ease. This game has a ton of content. There are lots of puzzles, collectibles and secret side missions, plus multiple endings and a design your own dungeon mode. So there is so much stuff to do here after the 10 hours main mission. On the downside, the graphics and animations are a bit clunky. But I really like the art design, which has this Demon Souls meets Lord of the Rings kind of feel that fit the gritty dark world perfectly. Overall, this game could use a bit more polish, but it is a great action RPG game with a well implemented co op mode. And while we're at the topic of awesome dark fantasy games, let's talk about Game of Thrones. No, 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 not that Game of Thrones game. The good Game of Thrones game nobody talks about. It really feels like watching a lost season of Game of Thrones. The storytelling is really engaging and the original soundtrack from the first few seasons is as good as ever. While Hunted was a straight up action RPG, this feels like an old school RPG from the early 2010s, with hard fights based on skill where you have to build your character up the right way. It's slow, tough and even harsh in parts. I recommend choosing the easy mode for your first playthrough. While the graphics and battle management gameplay are certainly double A, 
the story is where this game shines and it doesn't have to hide from the big players like The Witcher 3 or Dragon Age. It's about real politics, intrigues and plot twists, an intricate twisting and well written story. And it was so much fun finally playing an old school RPG with real stakes again. I highly recommend you give this game a try. For me, as a fan of the Game of Thrones universe, this game is a blast. But sometimes you need to take a breather and relax. And there is nothing more satisfying than waiting for minutes in the perfect spot for your target to appear only to fire the pixel perfect shot at the perfect angle to get a slow-mo x-ray bullet cap. That helps significant historical figures transitioning. Ah, that was a close one. <laughs> Anyways, Sniper Elite V2. This game left quite the impact on me. And is all about the sniper lifestyle. And for some reason, the slow mo bullet X ray cam doesn't get boring four games in. I'm always looking forward to play another Sniper Elite game. I love sniping and in this game it's just a joy to do. The gameplay on offer here is great and it's not just sniping, we have silenced pistols, machine guns, melee attacks and tons of additional gadgets. However, the game is at its best when you are concealed and lining up that perfect long range shot. If you hold your breath you can go into a bullet time state and if you manage to nail that shot just right you get the gory x-ray kill cam. The only downside is that the AI is a bit of a mixed bag. If you play the game on the highest difficulty it is ruthless and you better make each shot count. For those looking to test themselves and have a more realistic option this is for you. I played on the standard difficulty and found it to be more fun. Even if the AI is a bit dumb. A metagame that manages to make setting up the perfect shot enjoyable is our final place on this list. And that goes to a series I felt really nostalgic for lately. It sent me down a spiral of awesome gaming moments. Hitman Absolution, my second favorite Hitman game. The classic Hitman series will always have a special place in my heart and especially Hitman Blood Money, which is my favorite. But since I currently don't have a copy I could capture for this video, I give the first place to the close second, Hitman Absolution. And it simply wins because you can dress up as a furry. That's it guys, thank you for watching. <laughs> okay, okay, a few words about Absolution. The whole game world is your oyster. The levels are huge and we are free to go wild from the first moment. Which is a feature I really missed in the new Hitman games. In Hitman Absolution you have all the tools and weapons from the first minute and can wreak havoc to your heart's content. It thrives on allowing us the freedom and creativity we always want as a Hitman. From the sneaky signature kills to spectacular horrifying accidents. Nobody does it quite like Agent 47. Some people prefer to play the game with a stealthy strategy, while others tend to go all guns blazing. I can relate to that. While it is a departure from the original Hitman series, it is one that I really enjoyed. In this regard, it felt like the new Splinter Cell games, where the devs streamlined the gameplay a bit to make it more accessible with an increased focus in action and being easier to play. But you can always crank up the difficulty and turn all the helping settings off. So you're in for an old school Hitman experience. That's it guys, but the real question is, what is your favorite hidden gem on the PlayStation 3? Which game would you recommend? Which is your favorite in your PS3 collection? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, kick the like button, sharing is caring and subscribe. But most importantly, have a great day and get the kick out of gaming. Inviting me back to your place, huh? Oh, this is a first. Whoa. I will kill you if you touch any of my stuff, like this. Oh. Ah! Oh.